chaos Q and A. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually not really a Q and A anymore. It's got all kinds of fun things. That's it's true. a design uh, Sunday chat. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's exactly it's what it is. Oh, who needs to mute? Who's busted? Who's got it? Is it me? Oh, let me check. No, I'm good. I'm muted. There we go. Am I good? Uh, uh, I'm muted. It was me. It was me. Oh, it's you. <laughs> After you told me so. The one person that said, don't do that is the one who did it. Okay, <laughs> guys. Okay, I love it. Amy's here today. That's great. We got Amy. Gaia over in YouTube world kind Yay. of chatting away. Oh, Jonathan's over there too. Okay. So guys, here's oh the thing. My gosh. We have we <laughs> we have so much on the calendar for today. I know. We, I know. We can't we can't do quite as much chit chatting. We can't. The last no. session that we did, which Ooh. was basically Nancy Satter's coming in. Oh, oh Nancy, <laughs> we have missed you. Come hey, on. Nancy. Get in the next step, darling, because we're wondering where you are and what you're doing. So <laughs> She Lisa, was an inner circle Lisa? client. Lisa can't watch but, the chat. That's what the rule is. I know, no. I know, I know. <laughs> you can't watch the chat. You have to. Okay, all right. Look, at, oh, so look in front of you. Oh, I am looking in front of me. I have so <laughs> much in front of me. Oh my gosh. You do. Okay. Maybe. I have some questions. Oh my the, gosh. Yep. It, no, she, no, she's right. That's she's actually what, what we're going to do. What we're going to start, we're going to jump right in, guys, to Q&A. So Lisa, cool. that's your cue. Take it, it away. All right. <laughs> Let's see who we've got. Oh, ah, okay. I have, oh, I have, oh, I have like four oh, past inner circle people in here today. This is so fun. All right. So let's, let's uh, dive right in with Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Okay. Share screen. Okay. Now, Lisa, you're talking about Elizabeth from um, inner circle, Elizabeth? I am indeed. Oh, yeah. I am indeed. Yes, Elizabeth lives in Stockholm, and she has this fabulous, fabulous, fabulous um, uh, penthouse condominium there in Stockholm. And you can go, yeah, okay. So can now, oh, yes. uh, oh, that's wrong. Yeah, okay. So, so all right. So share screen. Guys, this is a live show. We don't. <laughs> it's so live. It's so <laughs> live. Is that better? So. Yes. Less right. chaos, right? Yeah, better. Great. Okay. So this is the deal. Okay. So we've been talking about this hallway in here's the plan of Elizabeth's um, lovely residence. And um, like I said, it's very contemporary. It's in Stockholm. It's at the top of a building. It's got these very skewed, very, very, very high ceilings. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about there with this is a human. <laughs> And that gives you a reference point to how high her ceilings peak up to. And this long hallway, we've been working on for a while. And we've decided that she's going to go with a cluster of these mooey lights, which I adore, right? Mm -hmm. These are fantastic. They and gorgeous. They sound yes. Mm -hmm. Aren't they amazing? Oh, they're, they're the best. And I had originally told her in an inner circle class, which she actually recorded, that you see my lovely drawings on screen here, but <laughs> you can see the peak of the hallway as she enters from the front door and goes down to the end. And I said, what I wanted her to do is get an odd number, three or five of the Mui lights, and I wanted them different sizes, and I wanted them to hang at different heights all the way down the hallway all the way down this hallway so that they told this wonderful sort of story. Now, she's found something. What did you say to me, Elizabeth? Oh, okay. She's found a couple of Mui lights. Um, oh, but she's got one that's, so the, the whole, the whole um, hallway all the way across is fairly narrow, right? It's only um, 120 centimeters, right? from here to here, okay? So it's fairly narrow. So we have to make the story happen kind of in that space. And she's found one of the movies that's 105 inches. And Elizabeth, darling, I hate to tell you this, but that is gonna be too big because that's only gonna leave you seven centimeters on either side. And it's going to look oversized for the for the um, space, even though it's up high. So I would say go the next size down and then 
three others or two, uh, excuse me, either two or four others that are all different sizes. You could pair one of like the smaller sizes all together. Because when you look at this, right, they come in relatively small sizes like this guy. Um, this one is, I think, the one that you're thinking of that's 105. So that's going to be too big for the hallway. It's going to command everything. Um, and the hallway is too long to only do the one. So we need to do at least three. So think of maybe two of these like this, and then maybe uh, three of the smaller ones or two and a smaller one, whatever combo you want to do, but not the big guy. Okay. So I hope that helps you, Elizabeth. Keep us posted. I know it's probably been a beautiful summer in Stockholm. Uh, God knows she's probably not getting 81 degrees. So... <laughs> So, um, so Elizabeth, keep us posted. Um, oops, I, I don't know why that's not going back. Uh, let me go back. Okay, good. Oh, that's it. All right. So, so that was my first question today. And do I have time for one more, or are we jumping yeah, into Chelsea? Yeah, do another one. Yeah, do another one. Yeah, let's do, do one another more. one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ah, okay. Well, this is a fun one. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. I've got several fun ones here. Um, uh, la, 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 la. Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay. Let's do this. All right. And share screen. Boom. There we go. Okay. So this is a board. So Lenora is part of our club, right? She's part of our design club and she has been hard at work kind of progressively doing one space at a time. And um, you know, we've been working on her bathroom for a couple of uh, Q&A sessions, that's for sure. But she hit me with this question um, this week, which really, I will say, Lenora, to be honest, would be a perfect inner circle question. Um, because we cover, here's the question, which is, how do you conceptually approach designing a um, uh, a, what do you call it? Uh, a, a great room space. Okay. Um, with your furnishings, right. And I get that question a lot. Now there's a couple of resources in the library. Uh, oh, Megan, what's the one on how to lay out a furniture, how to lay out your furniture. Oh, yeah. That was called how to lay out a, a room. And it's in yes, the how to lay out a library. Room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Lenora, darling, I want you to go read that document because that's going to give you information around um, passageways and things like this that will give you reference points for sizes and layouts. Now, I can tell you this. If you're looking at if this is not just placeholders by the architect. All right. And this actually shows, I think it does, because you indicated that there was this uh, 48 inch round over here that you're going to do by the sliding table and you've got uh, 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 stools here. If this is an accurate layout of what you're going to place into the space, that's probably fine. The only kind of spot that I'm seeing that's a problem is right here. This is going to be too tight. So the chair here is going to need to be quite small scaled. So in that in that um, uh, book that's in the library, um, uh, you're going to want to look at um, kind of clearance spaces, and that's going to be too tight. I can tell you right away. So what you want to think about is, uh, let me annotate for a second. Here's your deal: is that this is this is the board that she sent over with me, and she's got kind of this uh, hail uh, navy island. Oh, there's a there's a there's a heart floating uh -huh. on my desktop. Yes. What's someone's, that? Someone sending you love. There, oh, there's another one. <laughs> Whoever did that. Oh, there's another one. How fun. So here's the deal. Oh my goodness. I'm getting a bouquet of hearts. I'm liking that. All right. So here's the deal is that if you want something that's kind of beachy and sort of light, you are going to have to do something. So for a, from a layout perspective, Lenora, I want you to go look at that book, okay, in the design club, all right? Um, if these are the furnishings that I think that you're going to be using, you had indicated that these are uh, pieces that you've inherited, and that's what, a, oops, that's a situation many people are dealing with. 
Um, if that's the case, you know, these have a very sort of um, traditional, uh, 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 almost a chinoiserie uh, reference point, uh, the bowed leg on this table, the the high back sort of a, a quasi Ming chair. Um, and of course, the detailing you can see with the big uh, frog locks on these cabinets. So if that's actually what you're working with, you're going to need to actually try and Mm, reach out with that upholstery and get that upholstered eye, those upholstered items to be super clean and super light. Because if you're wanting that beachy effect, everything else in that envelope is going to have to read beachy. Okay. Because you've already sort of started with the hail Navy Island. Um, but, uh, but the rest of it really still reads quite traditional. So the only way you're going to do this is going to be able to say, I'm going to make this a transitional beach, which is fine. We can do transitional beach, but you have to be very mindful of the rest of your palette to make sure that it's light, softer, um, looks like you're doing Chantilly lace, lace for the walls, trim and cabinets. That's a rather cool white. Um, Dana Morgan raised her hand. Huh, I've never seen that before. That's fun. What's oh, happening, Dana? I had a qu question that I wanted to ask you. See my hand? I had a question that I want to ask you. You said the word chinoise, chinoise, I can't even remember. Chinoiserie, what yes. I mean? I'm sorry. Chinoiserie I, I is furniture that has a um, traditional Chinese directive to it. It was actually a style for a while. Um, uh, uh, and there's a number of pieces that kind of are, are still floating around, many of them in people's families um, and things that had a, it was a traditional directive that we uh, we did here in the US. And it kind of, you know, it kind of made things sort of feel a little exotic, a little more interesting. Um, some of the pieces were actually imported um, from China uh, and are actual antiques. So, you know, it's, it's a very definitive style, but it's not at all beachy. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to try and rope that into a beachy space, you've got to kind of press the pedal to the metal in the rest of the space to kind of like make that beach thing feel a little bit more, um, uh, uh, feel, feel a little bit more prominent with that. So I hope that helps, Lenora. Here's the homework, which is I, I'm dealing with her like she's in a nursery girl class. Here's her homework. Um, no, I do want you to check out that book in the uh, in the library. Did we put, did we put it up in chat, guys? Um, no, oh yes, let's put that book up in chat because that's a super helpful book for any of you guys that might be doing um, layouts of furnishings and taking a look at things. Because not only does it explain kind of sort of minimums that you need for traffic patterns and circulation and things like that. Didn't we do a master class on that? Yes, we did. Yep. Ooh, so we have that put up the also. link to the master yep. class. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's good. And I can tell you, um, boop, I'm going to pop back to this for a second. That coffee table, Lenora, looks like it's going to be too big. I don't know if that's a go, that's a possibility to go away or not. But um, that's too big. And this chair in plan is probably shown as too big. But again, I always know that sometimes when we're working with architecturals like this, those are just placeholders. So you you're going to want to get. Uh, yes, sorry, Dana. Sorry for it. Sorry for no, it. Okay. Lenora is in chat. If you want to look at the chat really quick, she said her main concern is the color of the wood items. I didn't know if you saw that. Yes, they are quite dark. OK, so. I, so, okay. So if, if my, if, if uh, I, I don't know what color your floor is, I don't know what your flooring material is in an inner circle situation. I'd know all of this environment. <laughs> so I could give you a better reference point, but it looks to me like this is kind of that golden um, uh, sort of a, almost a, a golden um, mahogany or acacia. Um, the table looks like it could be mahogany the chairs look like they have an ebony finish on them and in these pictures anyway. And the floor, excuse me, not the floor, but the coffee table looks like it's kind of that lighter sort of, um, uh, not a walnut, but uh, kind of one of the Chinese teaks of some sort. That's probably a teak table. Um, uh, so, so, oh, Lenora, okay, it's Daltile Emerson Wood Butter Pecan. I don't know what that is. It should be on the board. 
um, so I can get a reference point on it. Um, if it's this thing that's below the coffee table, I don't know if that was shot in the space or in another space. Uh, um, yeah, don't use the coffee table. It's too big. Yeah. And it's wrong. I, I got to say, because these are very classic chinoiserie pieces, as are these uh, ebonized Ming chairs, okay? The table is nice and quiet, but then bingo, you go over to the coffee table, and it's that kind of contemporized chinoiserie, and that feels a little... Um, uh, vernacular, as opposed to these pieces that feel a little bit um, more formal. So if you're going to go here with these two and the table, blow out the coffee table and do something very sort of um, transitional beach that would work with this chinoiserie um, uh, stuff going on. So no wood on that one. Okay. Um, think about a think about a metal piece. Think about something with metal and glass combined. Um, something along those lines. So that would be very good. Okay. All right. Good. So I hope that helps, Honora. Oh my gosh! And keep us posted, as I hope you will. So, um, all right. That's good, you guys. This is good. And 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 Lenora, make sure you check out the two links that are to the club products, uh, the club uh, resources uh, there that you can definitely um, uh, help for layouts for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Good well, job, I Lisa. I think, yes, everybody can. Yay. 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 That was, a I, I, I that was amazing. I'm going to give, give her a clap. Oh, you're going to give me a clap. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's fun. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for well, how about giving Lenora a clap for putting that nice board together? Oh, yes. Good job, Lenora. That was nice. Yes. That was good amazing. job. Absolutely. Very efficient. So, yay. Okay, well, very yeah, good. I okay. Maggie, I think Maggie's up right now. Oh, well, actually, well, speaking of efficiency, we have a special guest today. Um, as you guys know, oh! today is our sustainability episode, and we are thrilled to have a very special guest on with us. Um, did you want to introduce her, Dana? I don't know her very well. So yeah. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm joking around. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh my God. Yes, I, you I, do. I didn't, you know, guys, it's so funny. So, Chelsea, be ready. But, you know, I didn't know that we were actually going to go to Chelsea. I thought you were going to do the news first. No, I'll do that after. I'll do that after Chelsea, actually. So, that's yeah. why you, you got yeah. me my surprise. Oh, sorry. My bad. So, anyway. So Chelsea, I, I think this, you know, the problem is, is um, when I re promote people, I only see her last, her first name. So I hope I don't more than one Chelsea here. Are we but, going um, to see Chelsea? Is she coming yeah, on? Her, yeah, we're bringing her online right now. Chelsea, well, let's move it. So, <laughs> okay, and I'll tell everybody who Chelsea is uh, in a second yes. as she jumps online. So let's go see if she shows up and magically... Oh, oh yay! Yes. There she is, hey, Chelsea. Hey, Chelsea. <laughs> you How cut your you? hair. I did. It's yeah, pretty short now. It was it getting too long. Oh, I know. I'm having a bad hair day today too. So, but yours I'm, looks fabulous. Yeah, I love no, it. How you. are you, honey? I'm good. Yeah, I just moved, so I'm still settling in, but I'm doing great. So wait, wait, wait. You're still in LA? Yes, yeah, still in West Hollywood, but just moved homes. So, oh, oh nice. cool! Well, good, good I love the, I love the books behind you. I love the palette, like that ombre. Do you see that the books behind her? Like they're styled. Beautifully. The story bookshelf, yes, <laughs> that's gorgeous. Yes, there you yes. go. I love that. That's that my great. Chelsea. Yeah, that's 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 eye. Yeah. Yay! Yay! <laughs> yay! Yay! So Chelsea, guys, has been um, has been in and around our design firm for a long time. And Chelsea actually um, was my first uh, design assistant when I moved my offices back down to Southern California from NorCal. And, um, and uh, but right around the time of COVID hitting, um, she uh, moved up to LA and then started working remotely with us and actually has now um, opened and her, her directive has always been kind of sustainability. You know, how can we live sustainably? And um, she now has this amazing shop, um, online uh, shop that is all things sustainable, which you're going to have to tell us about. Okay. Well, you know, I wanted to say one thing before Chelsea started with her, with her thing is, you know, guys, I mean, Chelsea 
I can't believe you just turned 70 because <laughs> amazing. Never know. it's just amazing because she's got the wisdom of a 70 year old, but she's, she <laughs> anyway, does. It's very true. It's very true. We don't, and we, and us and our firm has known Chelsea for a very, very long time. And um, so we're super happy to have you here. So tell us about what's going on in sustainability. We actually, I, I don't have a clue right now. So tell us some good news. Is there any good news? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some big things that are happening every week. Um, I, I do like to keep updated on the positive news. Um, one thing that was really fun that happened this week, less in the tier, interior design space, but um, the founder of Patagonia actually decided Ooh. to, um, essentially switch ownership of his company over to nonprofits. So all of their profits will be going towards fighting climate change. So that was some exciting wow. news that we got this week. Wow. That's a big deal. Yeah. I was, did wow. see that. I yeah. did see that. That Yes. Where, where do you do a heart? I don't know how to do a heart, no, but that's fantastic. That's very exciting. That's yes, very, very, no, hard it's very one. exciting. It, you're right. It's not, it's not in tears directed, but it is important. And so mm -hmm. that's really very exciting. Yeah. So now Chelsea, I had a couple of questions that we thought we might kind of like query you about that are interiors based. Um, some of them came from our club and some of them came from YouTube. So can we just hit you wide with yeah, some? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, this one probably might, I don't know if this might be something that you might need to research or not, but um, one of our, I think a club member actually indicated that she had just been um, uh, tested positive uh, as allergic to formaldehyde. And so she wanted to know how she could research or what the situation is with formaldehyde content in furnishings. Yeah, I think it's most common in furnishings and then as well in actual building materials. So it's actually most common, I think, in insulation, but can be in finishes and furniture and even glue and furniture, things like that. Um, so yeah, she'll probably have to do some research into the product she's bringing in to her home and into how the home was actually built. And um, I know it can be in household products too. So even things like, you know, dishwashing detergents, things like that. So yeah. That sounds I'll awful. Okay. Research. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. So, oh, that's crazy. Okay. Ooh, thank you. We have to like, look at that. Um, so there was another question is that, you know, we've heard for a long time sort of the idea around the phrase reduce, reuse, recycle, right? And I wanted to see what you thought about it from the standpoint of how we could apply that in, in design and in interiors. And, you know, we've kind of done a little bits and pieces on things like um, uh, looking at used furniture resources and places like that. But what else would you suggest that we can do to kind of like help if that cycle is still a valid cycle that, um, you know, sustainability is talking about? Yeah, I think it's still a, a valid cycle. And I would say reduce is where it starts. And that is still a big one. And for interiors and, and fashion and things like that, um, I would say a good start is really finding your personal style and shopping for timeless pieces. So you're shopping around less. So reducing how much you're buying and consuming in general. Um, mm -hmm. And you can really define what's timeless to you. You end up shopping less quick trends and um, we'll have pieces that can last you as, as long as they hold up, hopefully for, you know, close to a lifetime or things like that and really be able to take a, products with you. Oh, that's a, that's a great idea. And I happen to know guys that she is an absolute dyed in the wool minimalist. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me when I say that house that looks that what you see behind her is probably not going to change. That's moved in for Chelsea. I, li yeah. I like that. I like oh, no, I do too. I love it. Yeah. Chelsea walks her talk. She absolutely does. So I love that. Okay. So now we already have things out there that are 
um, when you, you mentioned something earlier about kind of our textual materials, and we already have things that are like low or no VOC paints here in the US, and Europe's probably way ahead of us with things like that. Um, but uh, uh, where else can we be looking to kind of reduce that sort of impact and footprint with the materials that we select and things? Yeah, I would say, I mean, you mentioned used furniture earlier, and um, that's definitely a big one. I think the quickest way to reduce your impact is when you are purchasing, um, going for secondhand pieces. So whether that's shopping from places like Cherish, Etsy, going to your local vintage thrift shops, flea markets, that's the quickest way. Um, there's a new company called Kayo, K-I-A-I-Y-O, I believe, and um, they're a pretty amazing resource to shop secondhand, and they'll deliver everything by glove for like $40 fee, and they have great um, restoration hardware pieces and in great condition and things like that. Um, wow. And that's an yeah. online company. Yeah, that's, online. That's, and they're, they're that, a few that's exciting. Fee. Yeah, that's exciting. Oh, my gosh. OK, very good. What about things like because, um, you know, I'm always recommending that people paint and we can do low VOC painting. But what about the after effects? Because I happen to know that you can recycle paint. So yeah. um, do you know anything about that? Can you tell people anything about those things? Yeah, you can definitely, um, there's some paints that you can recycle depending on um, what they're made of. You can also even donate paints, things like that. I think the recycle and reduce, Ooh. reuse, recycle is, is very important. Um, really finding a place for your items when you are done with them. Living in Los Angeles and before that San Francisco, the amount of times I would see people throw away perfectly good furniture, paint, things oh like that just on the side of the road because they didn't want to deal with, you know, finding it a new home. Um, if you're wanting to reduce your impact, I think one of the fastest ways is, you know, posting something for free on Facebook Marketplace, or you can find your local oh. buy nothing group, things like that. Um, and actually just finding it a home for, for someone who's in need, best way to do it. Yeah. Oh no, that's fantastic. And the idea of donating paint does restore, um, uh, the Habitat for Humanity place, do they take paint? Yes, that's actually funny. Ooh, I was just that's there fabulous. this week and they had a huge section of paint. So they definitely do. That's cool. fantastic. Um, so so, uh, so I, another question came in is, what, as, what else can we as design consumers, because that's really what we are, right? We are consumers of design when we are, changing or doing new things with our spaces, what else can we be asking for or looking for? Like for a while there, I know there was um, something with, um, uh, uh, if you were looking for wood furnishings, you could find FSC. FSC, yes. Um, yes, so tell people what that is. Yeah, there's definitely certain certifications to look for, like Made Safe is one of them, um, Certified Organic. West Elm's actually one of the companies that's working towards that a lot. I know a lot of their wood pieces are FSC. I'm forgetting the exact um, uh, what that stands for, but it, it verifies that their, um, their wood is resourced from um, Sustainable forest. forestry. It, it's a yes. little better, yes. but I will say the FSC does have some controversy because um, uh, some people have argued that they aren't doing as much as they say they're doing um, because a lot of these companies are paying quite a bit to get that certification. And sometimes it can be a pretty label, but it is um, a step forward. And there are certain things they, they are doing with FSC. So is something to yeah. look for, but do be, I have, do be wary and do your own research still. Can I ask a question? The, I heard um, it mentioned, and, and it's, maybe it's a wives' tale, but they said that if one city would just paint all the rooftops white, we would solve global, global climate change. And is have you ever heard that before? Do you know what that's about? I haven't, I've heard certain things like that. I think saying probably solving climate change. I don't know how accurate that would be. Um, 
but yeah, there's definitely quite a, quite a few things that, that can be done. Um, but doing them at scale, uh, is, is hard to implement. I, I don't know if that, if that one would, would quite do it. I haven't heard that. Yeah. Huh. Now, Kelsey, I know that you have an online store. Is that, you still have that store and everything? It's yes. Quite, it's called it's mindful right? goods. Yeah. It's all zero mm. waste, plastic free body and home care products. So it, things from body soaps to dishwashing, um, detergents, uh, things like that, but it, the whole shop's plastic free. We ship plastic free, um, and yeah, really focus on reducing waste. Very okay, cool. And so, uh, I wish we had the little logo to put up. Maybe we can put that up at the end of the thing. Yeah. Thing. I'd love yeah. I think Megan just dropped thing. the link too. So yeah. Yeah. Story. I dropped the link there. Yeah. What are, I have, I have a question. Good. What are like some of your like favorite, like go-to, um, uh, brands for that, that like have like that offer eco-friendly materials yeah. or, um, products like in this, like socially responsible manner. Definitely. One of my favorites is Avocado. They started as oh, um, a yeah. mattress company. I have their mattress and I love it, but now they have um, bed frames and other home decor and they, they're expanding more into um, furnishings in general. Parachute, I really love for beddings, linens, things like that. Um, Sabai, S-A-B-A-I, I, I want to say, is a new one that just popped up. I, I just came across it this year, so I think it's pretty new, but um, they have a really great buyback program. So um, if your furnishings get pretty beat up, they'll take it back for you, from you, give you a discount on a new piece, and they refurbish all their pieces. So they're oh, like, that's amazing. Taking things wow. out of the landfill. So that's a that's a new one to look into. Oh, oh I love the idea of that. Oh and gosh, also, that's great. And I also want to mention to everybody, we are doing a donation to One Tree Planted. Chelsea, did you did you know? Do you know about that? That group? I didn't know you were doing that, but I I, I love that. They're they're great. We started this group like has raised over a thousand dollars, Chelsea. Oh my gosh, amazing! Yes. No, yeah. right? Yeah, one thousand eighty dollars. So one thousand and eighty oh. trees have been planted. It's one dollar for every tree. So guys, please donate. Whether it's one dollar, that's one tree. That's a big deal. Like small little incremental it changes a make big a difference. Deal. So yeah, and, and you know what it is? It's it's a tree in the ground. It's not yes. uh, just yes, yeah. It's not <laughs> it includes labor, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. No, it includes the 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 tree, the the tree and planted and, and monitored. So yeah. it's really like it's an amazing little program. Mm. Yes. I'm yeah. like well, I'm Chelsea, looking. What? Oh, sorry. Oh. I'm I'm shopping on Chelsea's website right now. Um, and I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll her prove her website it. Oh, and support like, Chelsea. Oh, Everything uh, on her website is. Oh, look at that. Here, I'll go. I'll go to the front so you guys can see. Yes, it's a beautiful. Oh, website. And I personally have some of this. There yeah. you go. I personally Chelsea. have um, the little scrubby pad thing and yeah. the little brush. I love them. They're great, Chelsea. These are beautiful. And they, they arrive. That's another thing you mentioned that really gets my goat. Is um, gets my goat. Gosh, I sound like I grew up in. <laughs> Idaho or something. Um, uh, no, but it really it uh, it really bugs me when I see a product, and I've bought the product specifically because I'm being mindful of its you know origin source or whatever, and it's wrapped in plastic. Yeah, I'm like, what? What is going on here? What sort of disconnect? Oh, Chelsea, you've expanded. I gotta go shopping. Yeah. Okay. What's, a, what's your favorite product on here? I'm curious. Um, probably the dishwashing kit. It's uh, a plastic free dish kit. Yes, it's right there. So instead of dish liquid dish soap or um, powder dish soap, it's a bar um, that lasts uh, quite a few months. Wow. Mine lasts sometimes up, up to six months. And then um, the dish brush, I think, ends up looking also really aesthetic in the kitchen. It's beautiful. So, I'm going to um, add to cart. <laughs> yeah. Add to cart. Right. That's right. Absolutely. I love, I love this. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm absolutely going to get that. Oh, oh, that's you. awesome. Ooh, ooh. Thank you. I see a great question. I see a great question that's come up in chat. What non-toxic flooring options can you recommend, Chelsea? Um, we'll definitely have to do some research on what's available near you. Um, mm. 
I would say non-toxic is a great way to go, but I also see a lot of people sharing flooring that is um, left over from projects. So if you're doing like, let's say a smaller space, you can save money and reduce waste by looking into um, products that are available that are um, surplus. Ah, interesting. How do they find those? Uh, I've seen quite a few on places like Facebook Marketplace. Um, there's also, you can right. find um, on Facebook, buy nothing groups in um, your area where people will post surplus from projects, things like that, or things that they have in their home that um, they're getting rid of. And you can share things as well to um, pass along to each other. You know, that's community. great for everybody because yeah. a lot of times if you order you know, typically in a construction shop project, you'll order um, uh, at least one par of, of of a backup for things just in case things break, right? right? You're installing tile and the tile slides off the back of the truck. It's happened, guys. <laughs> um, and um, so you end up with extra and but you end up with too much extra, right? It's good to have like maybe back stock of maybe uh, 10 square feet or something like that, just in case something gets damaged. But maybe you have 30 feet and you don't have, no, have any place to put it. I didn't know there was any place to go other than restore to, um, and not everybody has a, a habitat for humanity near them. Right. So Facebook buy nothing. That's fantastic. What a yeah. great resource. Even I know, you know, on projects, people can place orders for the wrong flooring or things like that. And, you know, um, contractors might end up buying it back or things like that. And they're looking to sell it at a discount and um, can get, you know, some sustainable products that way too. Yes. Good, 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 good. Okay, so well, listen, ooh. I want to thank every, I want to thank Chelsea. We have a lot to go through, but thank you so much for coming on. Yes. I know, I, it's just she is so delightful. I just, just want to hug you. Oh, yes. so of course, you, are, you guys are the best. I always, always love to see you and, and chat. I love you too, honey. So I love you. Feel, feel free to hang on with the group if you want. If you need to log right. off and do your life, feel free to do that. Um, but we're going to move on a little bit. And sure. we actually have a really exciting, fun person that we are going to bring on she is a rock star and we all want to be just like her when we grow up yeah <laughs> it's true. amazing and her name is joy and um she's doing Joy's a, coming on she's coming on right now mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah i've got to go find her in my attendee thing really quick so why doesn't somebody introduce joy a little bit while i go sh and while i go find her, I go oh, her. <laughs> how does one introduce someone like joy Tell you what, oh, right, so Joy gosh. is a powerhouse. Like Joy for president. Okay, I'm just saying that. Joy for um, president. Yes, for president. yes, and so I Joy would bring Joy on as president. I would yeah. totally do that. I would totally. Yeah. I would totally bring on Joy as president. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So. I don't I know that Joy that. wants to be as president, but <laughs> I don't think she wants to be president. But I would definitely, I would definitely. Well, no, I will say oh this. Oh my Joy. goodness. Hi, Hi Joy. Hey. Hey. How are you? Oh my God. I am How well. are you? Good. Thank Good. you. And thanks for all the compliments. I mean, she said somebody oh that's my a rock star. I was like, yeah, who? Right? <laughs> you. It's true. It's true. Love Joy. You, darling, you, you, you. Oh my gosh. So what can we say about Joy? Joy is an amazing woman who we've met through our inner circle um, program because she joined us. Ah, oh, gosh, did you join us back June. in April, Joy? I think it was June. I know it was I think... April, May, April, May. Like, April, April, May, April. something like Maybe that. April. I've forgotten. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, and um, Joy is working on this. So she currently lives in New York and is working on a magnificent uh, residence yeah. out of state for her... Um, when she's no longer living in New York. And what is amazing about it is that, you know, not only is it, so it's complicated when you're doing a renovation or you're doing a new build like Joy was tackling. Um, but uh, uh, when you, in fact, and I'm gonna show you a picture of what I first saw when we met Joy on our first <laughs> inner circle session. Joy, you're gonna love this. That was what we saw. Yeah. So, 
So she that was in was framing and studs, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yes. So taking a house and, and she actually took it from dirt. We didn't start with her with dirt, but um, dirt and plans. So she actually, um, you know, got to hear and realized that she wanted a little bit of help. Right. Joy. Would you say that would, that would be accurate? That would be accurate. That would be accurate. Yes. And I am looking, I, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give them, if you don't mind, you know, that set of pictures you sent to me of oh, the sure. progress of this very amazing space. So there we go. Same mm-hmm. shot, same angle, right? Um, but we always love progress shots, right? So this was as she was moving through the inner circle project, um, drywall got filled in and we got to begin to get the, uh, base structure for the fireplace from hell. Would that be correct? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. I remember. Tell us a little bit about that fireplace, Joy. Um, it, it started off as a great idea, and then I realized I needed the stone for it. I realized how big it was. It, it just, and I found the stone by accident on 59th Street at a place that said, Oh, you'll never make it out to our warehouse. Turns out the warehouse was like 50 miles from where this house is, and they only had 200 square feet left in the world. It came from Romania. So that's it. Oh my so, gosh. Um, yeah. Right. God was with me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that yeah. is crazy. And then I'm just going to show them this now. Wow. Oh so my gosh. look how beautiful this stone turned out, right? Mm. Oh my gosh. In a relatively short period of time. I mean, it feels like forever to you, I'm sure. <laughs> it, does. it really does. But, you know, in in two two months, something like that. And what is yeah. amazing, I'm going to annotate on this for a second. What is amazing is that Joy and I work together online <laughs> to get oh, paint every stone placed. Oh, and the paints! That's Look true. at this. Yes, yes. Up here, we we're doing lay. that. We did a dry lay on the ground. The stonemasons were not happy with me. And I sent it to Lisa and we like picked out every little stone that was an outlier. Shannon, who's online, was looking at it as well. Every friend I had that I care about was helping. And then we did the paint on the ceiling. Like, what color should it be? So I was painting and Lisa was zooming in. And it was (laughs) definitely a a group effort. (laughs) <laughs> it was. It was absolutely. But, 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 oh my gosh! But, that but kind of detail is actually what makes the difference. Um, absolutely. When you're doing a project, I mean, when mm-hmm. you walk into a project, it's all of those details being done, and that kind of the t- attention paid that creates that, mm-hmm. and that's how you get that. Mm-hmm. That's right. You don't get. You don't get this. Yeah. Okay. A, not on accident. Look at that. Mm-hmm. You don't wow. get this because you are. You because be, without that, that's absolutely true. Yeah. This level, and these are going out. Um, what color did you, we finally decide on the newel posts? They're going to be similar to the floor color, so the, the floor color, floor yes, that's up, right, yeah. that's right. One of my favorite images, too, that Joyce sent us recently, I just have to show you guys, is this, and this oh. shows you the fireplace up close. The mm-hmm. still the 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 sample testing on the on the paints, but the lighting is oh, starting yes. to get installed. Mm-hmm. That looks, looks so amazing. amazing. And mm-hmm. and these absolutely exquisite. These were a bit of a beast. These were the bookshelves <laughs> from hell too, right? Yeah. Oh my the whole goodness. thing was just I was in way over my skis. The every bit of this. And I would call Lisa at like the ninth hour because I'm on the East Coast. I'd be texting. Can you please, can I have a Zoom? Can I, what do you think about this? Oh, remember that? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Oh <laughs> this is one of the first yeah. things we talked about. And we were like, okay, here's the floor options. And we're looking at the, the height of the fireplace. We're, are, are we good with this? Are we good with these dimensions? You know, because all of these details 
are decisions. They're design decisions that need to be made. And so Joy was Joy was inordinately organized, I'm going to say, um, with her information. And because she was, we were able to move through it quickly, right? So that makes that makes a huge difference to things too. Potential light fixture ideas for this. Oh gosh. So this went from this to did it go to this or, oh no, that's dining room. Oh, and yeah, in the office, I'm sorry. Okay, no, so that went to this, um, that got built into this. Yeah. Oh my gosh, wow. I want to swoon looking at yeah. that fireplace in real life now, Joy. That mm-hmm. is so fantastic. Mm-hmm. Oh my everyone gosh. Who's, everyone who's thinking of working with Lisa needs an iPad and the Notability app. I'm just, <laughs> and, an, and an Apple pencil. <laughs> It's not going to happen without these things. Go invest. It's going to cost you $1,000, but there's no other way to communicate it. Just no. saying. Just my saying. My iPad <laughs> with my Apple Pencil. There you go. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Totally. Totally. It is so useful because when you're trying to communicate an idea, right, sometimes you have to draw, sometimes you have to sketch those kinds of things. And, you know, you guys see me drawing things on on the computer and that's a hot mess, but it gets the idea across. Right. And so that's really all we need to do. Oh, my gosh. I am so in love. I know that I know that uh, stonemason ended up hating you. <laughs> But um, I don't really care because you live in this home and this Mm -hmm. is the most one of the most magnificent uh, 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 manifestations of a dry lay I've ever seen. Well, it really looks good. I want to say, Joy, Joy, and I think you will agree with me, you know, having Lisa and basically the whole team and the whole design club community, in a sense, at your back, giving you that sense of of, um, confidence to, to go ahead and make some of these of the, these expensive and big decisions I think makes a huge difference um, it, 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 I have you are you are absolutely right it was seriously I'm not joking lying Lisa hasn't paid me to say this but it was priceless <laughs> and had I not had Lisa I mean I marched into this like I can handle this and like 10 minutes in I was shaking in my boots crying in a corner and wanting my money back but, and then I looked for a designer because it's, it's, it's a, di- a distance away. I needed someone who could be remote. I needed like people to bounce it off of. I needed the library. And so when I stumbled backwards into the design club and the inner circle, it is priceless. I can't, I can't imagine how much I would have spent otherwise with flying someone in. How would I have done that? So yeah, yeah I'm no, telling it's everybody. Just- you know, it's funny. We just had um, we have a current inner circle person who um, uh, 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 is coming is going to come in the next step also, actually. But uh, so you'll meet her. You'll love her. Um, Cindy, I'm thinking of Megan. And oh, okay. uh, 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 Cindy had a say, had a similar situation in that she hid in her circle and she was about two weeks out from painting doing the first pass on painting, at least the contractor was telling her this, right? And she was not sure about her colors and she just really needed input, right? So the day, so we started, that was the first thing we started on. And the day before the painter started, she finally got working together. She got her color locked in and she loved it, right? But that's the thing is that, you know, if she had gone ahead with the other colorway, we are talking probably ten thousand dollars right off the bat that she would have blown out of her budget, and she knew it, right. you know, and so she knew why she needed to kind of like get on board. So, it's it's kind of one of those things where um, it's funny people have the misconception that good designers can uh, good designers cost money, but in the end, we actually save people money. That's what I Absolutely. always told them. Like, customers absolutely customers. Be, before before i got with the design club this bookshelf that we're looking at you'll see it's got two sides that are back and one center that's reset that's protrudes yes i didn't work with my architect to sort of push the wall back so when it came time to put the bookshelves in i only had 12 inches of space had mm-hmm. i worked with lisa and the design club at my architect phase i would have yes. known to do that but by myself, this, I didn't know. And then after the fact with Lisa, what we came up with was 
okay, we'll pull it 12 inches into the room to give you at least one shelf on each side that has the depth. So again, that was a simple thing back at architecture, a more complicated thing at this phase and a forget it thing if I had gotten past this phase with it. So super helpful. Yeah, no, that's actually true. And the other thing that I love about it is that, you know, the scale of the of the of the stone is significant because it's two, two and a half stories almost, right? Um, and these are high, but they aren't deep. And so by bringing that forward, that de that depth change actually gives the, the whole composition more interest. So it ends up being kind of what, like a little bit of a happy accident, but you're absolutely right. If we had known, we could have shoved That's this right. window mm, just forward to right here and given you a little bit more breathing room on those and you know that's that's perfectly thought it's what we've come up with is a good solution but um but yes you're right that uh i would have cut that probably in in um yeah. paper and <clears throat> excuse me so you know it's so it's it's uh gosh it's fun i'm you know what joy please keep sending us progress shots because <laughs> i honestly feel like these are my babies it's these so are our babies right <laughs> well here's the thing I have alienated, like nobody else in my life wants to talk to me because this is all I talk about. So the fact that you want to hear about it, you're the only one I've got left. So expect more. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sure Shannon's interested because oh, Shannon's, Shannon's just interested. bought a house, right? <laughs> That's, right. That's right. He's further along than I am. So get ready for him. Right. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, yay. I love it. Oh, well, let me ask you, actually, you sent in a great question today. I wanted to kind of answer. Oops. Oh, la, 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 la. Let me answer that. Can you guys see this? Yes. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, so I love this. By the way, guys, take a look at this gorgeous, gorgeous molding mm -hmm. along here. And a really beautiful color combination. Oh my yes. gosh. I'm are you loving the ones we settled on? Classic gray and chantilly lace are my favorite. There you now. go. Yeah. Oh, I hope Michelle is listening today because she just she's in her circle one who also had a meltdown, like a <laughs> meltdown this week. She got on the phone in next step and she was very close to tears. Okay. Cause you know, oh. it was the classic, the contractor had made her cry and made her think for one moment that he was her boss. Right. Which happens <laughs> right with, with on job yes, sites. It it's, they easily forget. And sometimes they position it so that you forget that you're mm -hmm. actually paying them. <laughs> so we're at Megan and I, I got all hot under the collar mm -hmm. and said, we're going to do a whole, a whole workshop or something on this because Perfect. the uh, job site, the live job site knowledge that people need to have that nobody is talking about anywhere. Okay. Nobody tells you about how to get the stonemason to do a dry lay of a two and a half story shaft of stone without arguing with you because you simply won't approve right. it otherwise. Um, but, you know, how to get them to do that is a thing. No one knows, right? Nobody knows. And a lot of people are intimidated by their contractors. So right. we're going to take care of that. We're going to, I don't know when we're going to do that, but we're going to like, we're going to, I'm going to tell so, some serious, Lisa, serious secrets. Lisa, let's, let's get to Joy's question. I know Joy's question. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So yes, yes, yes. So darling, you were absolutely right. Is that you want a rectangular table in here. I know I these know. are easy because you got them, <laughs> but I would love to see Oh, uh, oh, let me do this. I would love to see a sort of a rectangular table happening in here. And I am probably not going to be to scale. So don't uh, uh, don't take this for words. But what I would I think would be really interesting is do a bench on this side. OK, and maybe that bench has a little bit of a low back or something like that to the mm -hmm. table. And then maybe a couple of chairs over here. All right, because you have this lovely chair railing or you could do two low benches. It doesn't matter because one side has a view and one side has gorgeous molding. So you kind of don't want to block, block either. So with a rectangular table in the center, OK, right, you could do two benches um, with a little bit of a low back 
right to them, maybe or nothing. It de- it depends. They and they don't have to match. They have to be a family. And then you want to do two chairs, okay, on the ends here. And that could be and very so cool. Would that not be turned the, the long way? Like, it oh, looks like I they're... might be. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I might be drawing yeah. it wrong on the picture, but it plan. Sorry. Okay. In plan ways. Yeah. Yep. Let's go. Bench. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, you know what? That's That's me not looking at the picture and going, oh, that's warped. So uh, there's your, and these uh, chairs could be super fun. Yep. The, so this is classically called in a dining setting, formal dining setting, this would be called the king and queen chair. Um, but you could have a blast with these chairs. You could upholster them in um, reverse stories if you wanted to do them, make them um, something kind of like maybe antiques that you've collected or something that are similar to each other, but maybe you upholster them exactly the same. I mean, you can have all kinds of fun with these. And then the bench I always say put a put a cushion on a bench because nobody really loves sitting on a wood bench or a metal bench for you know a long period of time. So, and if you're going to hang out with the fam, you know, in the breakfast room on a weekend or something like that, give yourself a fun little cushion. So you've got opportunities for upholstery and upholstery here, right? So opportunities for kind of like fun colorways and things like that. So this room is a perfect background for that. Does that sound fun or does that sound like a chore? (laughs) I am so wiped out from this. Um, I'm glad to have the idea. (laughs) So, okay. So Maggie, send Joy a couple of our favorite benches. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have a lot. (laughs) Yeah, we have a lot to to look at. So um, especially some of the transitional ones that could be very groovy. And then see if that doesn't like spur a little fun in your idea. Okay. Okay. And then can I hit the rest of the questions with you this week? Because I saw a couple that came in. Cover that. Yep. Yay, honey. All right. Great. Good to see you guys. Yes. You too. You too. Oh my gosh. I love love watching your progress. For sure. We have loved it. Oh my gosh. What's fun about Joyce's um, project is like even her before pictures are beautiful. Like, like, I know, right? It was just framing. I I was was, like, wow. Yeah. There was good. Yeah. The good, there was good framing. You, you used a really good architect for, for, you know, it, it shows it's going to be amazing. So I don't have an exterior photo. Oh, I should have grabbed. Oh yes. Wait. Oh, I love the exterior photos from this week. Oh, look at this. Let me do that. I know. Oh, okay. So let me see if this is right. Uh, Look at that. Can you see that? No. Uh, not really. Uh, oh, no. Oh, wait. Right. I open stopped the, sharing. Open okay, the so wait. Then, yeah. uh, oh, I need to do this. Sorry. Oh, I should know better. I do this every week. Come on, Lisa. There we go. Okay. No, no, Beautiful no. curve to this, right? Oh, nice. Oh, right. Loved that, how that turned out with the tiled stairs, uh, picking up a color from the aggregate. Ooh, mm-hmm. Love that. And there's the front of the house. Love that. Oh, Love where the stone ended up. Joy. Yes. Are you pleased? I yes. am pleased. And I remember the emergency where I was like, should I cancel the stone? I'm canceling the stone. Get hold of the stone. And now I'm so happy that it had already been purchased. That was out of my hands. And I really do love it. I love it. No, right it looks great. It takes the centerpiece up, really makes this peak work you know, and really makes the change from shake to siding over here, kind of like tie in with the stone in front of the bay window. Ooh, we have an inner circle person today that I hope is watching because this is the kind of bay window that I'm talking about for that. So mm-hmm. um, anyway, so I loved it and I'm glad we softened the curves on those sidewalks. I think those are Definitely. better. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So yeah, it's I love it. You are a, a rock star. Yeah, yeah, really. How do you you do those hearts? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for joining us Sunday. I know you have such a busy life. Thank you. Oh my gosh. It has been great. And I just can't thank you guys enough for really, really being there through every step, every meltdown. And I don't think it's over. I think there will be some more. So brace yourself. Uh, It's not over. Oh no, it's not over. 
Because furnishings, <laughs> FF and E, that segment, many yeah. meltdowns there too. So yeah. I'm here. I'm here for it. Wonderful. I'm here. Wait, wait, wait. I have, I have this right next to my desk. Okay. So if this Me is too. here for oh. every <laughs> <laughs> so this is, oh i don't <laughs> i love it megan you should have no, one I, should. Should have I know i know there's not right next to me at the moment but yeah they they've been oh in, my in god this. i love it oh, that's so well, great I, I will see you on thursday with my deep questions thank okay. you so much for your help right, thank you will sweetie Take care guys thanks so much bye. okay bye, bye. <laughs> oh awesome that was, that so was great. Oh God, it's so good to see her. Good, yes. good, good, good. We love that. So, all right. Well, uh, let's ah. see now. Um, what is next on our agenda? Do we have more questions? We do. I believe, believe maybe oh. later, but I do have some design news that I would love to share with you, if that's okay. 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 So, yes. guys, <laughs> that's what time it is. It's time for design news <laughs> with me. <Meg. laughs> <laughs> I wish I could play music, but guys, I am so excited to, to share my absolute number one favorite decor piece that, that one can purchase. And, um, what's even cooler is it goes along with our sustainability episode today and it would be Chelsea approved and it is Lisa approved also. And what it's called is, can you guys see it? Is it sharing the... On my end, no, like, no, we have just the uh, thumbnail. Oh, God, what is that? Can you see that? Okay, so guys, this is called kintsugi. And so the word kintsugi is formed by the Japanese word for gold, which is kin, and the word su, which means to um, reunite or to repair. And so when you put these two words together, it basically means to repair with gold. And um, it consists of using precious metals to fix broken ceramic objects. And it's usually bases, um, but the metal is allowed to flow into the cracks and it welds those shards together. Um, and thanks to that oh. technique, the cracks aren't hidden, um, but rather they're emphasized and they basically become a part of the history of the object itself. Like for example, like the Kintsugi bowls are used in um, Japanese tea ceremonies as a metaphor for resilience. And they're also associated with the philosophy of wabi-sabi, which is based on the ability to see yes. beauty and imperfection. And according to um, Japanese philosophy, we should learn to embrace our flaws and not hide scars and instead just proudly show them like as if they were metals. Um, another wonderful thing about kintsugi is that it starkly contrasts like today's consumer society um, of disposable goods. And it teaches us that the art of giving new value to damaged objects making broken, precious, and new all over again. And so what's really oh. amazing, it's just, and this has been around for a very, very long time. Um, but what's amazing guys, so like you can also buy Kintsugi repair kits. So if you have like a precious vase that broke or a teacup or a plate or any, really anything, you can repair it by getting one of these kits and make it look beautiful like this. And so instead of disposing of it, you can either repurpose it or basically re reuse it again and make it all the more beautiful. And I'll show you, if you guys, um, I'll show you some places where you can actually purchase Kintsugi oh objects. They are oh. so stunning, you guys. Oh so we've got a few few from Etsy there. Um, gosh, aren't they gorgeous, guys? So there's one from CB2. Um, and then on, on the right, it's First Dibs. Now I'll, I'll warn you, the ones from First Dibs are, are, are on the pricey ah, side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, you know, it's, I mean, they're welded together with gold. And so I just, I, I, every time I see one of these pieces, I mean, they're just breathtaking. Um, and I love, I love the meaning behind them too. So I wanted to share that with you guys today. So that oh, is I news. love it. Thank I so love much. it. Oh gosh. Uh, maybe Gaia can research and find a, a link to where we can buy some of those because uh, the repair kit, because oh, yes. I know I have something broken literally right now. So oh, yeah. um, that is absolutely amazing. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> that is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. So I love it. Mary Francis says how something broken can become more beautiful. That's mm -hmm. really amazing. Mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh, so, are we going to do more of these segments? I love yes, this. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh, were you going to say something, Dana? 
I was going to say I was going to bring Jonathan on and have him give his comments and have him join us for the, uh, the rest yeah. of the show. And what we're about to do a stump Lisa as well. So Jonathan would be perfect for that. He wants to come on. <laughs> and Jonathan, to answer to answer your question, that that's I know the CV2 one isn't necessarily like a legit repair one. It's more done in the style of Kintsugi. So it's a more affordable option. Um, but yeah, <laughs> wanted oh, to include it. Bobby K yeah. says you can get a Kintsugi repair kit on Etsy for 29 bucks. Yeah, not oh, bad. Chelsea. This is so right up Chelsea's alley, right? I love that's it. So inexpensive. <laughs> it, I know it is so inexpensive. That's surprising. I know. I know. Like the objects themselves. I mean, depending on like what, which. I mean, they can be they can be thousands of dollars. You know, if they're like really old and you know, obviously extraordinarily precious. But um, th there's a range. There, there's a range. But yeah, if you guys you guys can like make your own. Like if you want the look, go ahead and break a plate and put it back together and have it look awesome. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yes. So oh my God. That. That really, um, amazing. I. You're so welcome. It, <laughs> it is. It is my number one favorite decor piece. Like out of anything one can have in your home. Like it, that. That's the best, in my opinion. I just. I love I it. We had it in our store. Do we have it in the store or no? We. We, we are about, should have we something are about to store. actually. <laughs> yes. We have the CB2 Yay, plate, Good we'll girl. Yes. Let's yes. do it. Yeah. Let's okay. do it. That's. That's great. Uh, Bobby King says, I'm going to go break a lamp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not? You know? No, I just think they look so oh good. Oh, my God. That's lovely. Oh, my gosh. That's what. Oh, and somebody on. Uh, uh, oh, he says, I might just start breaking my bowls and plates just to do this. <laughs> exactly. It's that beautiful, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. that's fantastic. Oh, and maybe there's one. There, it looks like there's also one on, on Amazon. So, mm -hmm. Jonathan, do you guys get Amazon in Canada? Yeah. Yeah, we have you a do. different store, though. So some of the products that are available in the American store are are not sold on the Amazon.ca. But you do have, um, <sighs> sometimes you can order products from the American one and get them shipped to Canada. It just depends on what the items are. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That That's good to know. And then um, you guys also have, um, uh, uh, oh, it just blanked right out of my mind. Amazon and Etsy. Etsy yes. You guys also yeah. carry, I mean, Etsy's international, right? Yeah. Etsy's worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Good. Cause I did a project with um, a chandelier maker in Israel for a project here in the States through Etsy and oh, it was, it turned out to be gorgeous. It was actually recycled glass that he was working with, but, um, but he did this custom piece. It was, it was pretty amazing, but he was in Israel and the connection was Etsy. And he said, yeah, I ship anywhere in the world. So I'm like, oh, that's fun. Okay. So that's good. All right. Do I, do I need a coffee to, 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 or do I need to gird my loins for a stump, Lisa? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Um, we can even make this if you're up for it, Jonathan. I don't know. Can we yeah. can we make it a stump Lisa stump Jonathan? Oh, little segment. Okay, oh, I'm go. that's I'm fun. probably a little easier to stump than Lisa would be. <laughs> Lisa has way more. Experience than I do. All right, all right. Well, oh, I don't know you. about that. So, guys, if you, in case you don't know, stump Lisa is a segment that we do where I'm going to show Lisa a space, and she needs to um, determine what design style it is. And I try and challenge her, but as you know, Lisa is a master, so it's hard to do. So, really, it's like. It's my challenge more than anything, trying to stump Lisa. So here's the space. Ooh. Oh, 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 God, that's lovely, Maggie. Yeah, Woo. It's, a cool, it's a cool space. Okay. So what, I, I don't so know. Is, am I being asked what style? Yeah, the design what's style, the both of them. What's the, the question? The question is, what design style best describes this space? Okay, and well, you guys, definitely you closer guys, to the contemporary side of things than yeah, uh, guys, than anything else. But if you are, if you think you know, put it in chat oh, as well. Just yes, put it, put put it in the chat, guys, both in in YouTube and yeah. in the club. Lisa but, yeah, can't look at chat. Yeah, I'm not gonna look at chat. Yeah, I promise I won't. I'll shrink yeah. my chat. Because chat, okay, they're good. Chat. They're really good. Like chat gets. I know. I know. Oh. Our, our people on our channel and our club, they know yeah, it. Oh my gosh. So, okay. So I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Jonathan. Yes, it's definitely a contemporary space, but there's this really specific undernote, which says Scandi, 
uh, contemporary to me mm-hmm. because here, I oh, can I annotate? Yep, 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 yep. Where is it? Okay, here we go. All right. Because I'm looking at, I mean, this is a fairly obvious statement, right? So that is a Roche Boubois piece um, that was designed in the 70s. And it has this um, very sort of uh, 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 Scandi uh, style statement to it. It's done in leather here, which is also very uh, natural leather, which is also kind of very uh, Scandi and soft. But the real statement is all of this uh, not not pine uh, could be naughty alder, but there is a lot of this lovely wood and this combination of the wood also in a natural finish, and then it's made into the horizontal siding and the free floating stairs. You're right, Jonathan is 100% contemporary. Um, so, but this this wood note. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you've also got this black note. So I'm going to say Japandi, actually. Yeah. As a pro- I oh, that yes. too. Because it Japandi, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 It doesn't, the, the, the lightness and the minimalism makes me feel definitely very Scandinavian, but it doesn't have that sort of, that Höger feel, the, the, the no. soft textures. Right, right. All of right. those kinds of things that are more more common in a Scandinavian design. So uh, it's definitely a riff off of it and not a pure Scandinavian design. So it could it could be Japandi, I'm not sure. I'm going to say Japandi because I just spotted these guys up here. Yes. So these are a dead giveaway. You're absolutely right, Jonathan. It, there's, there's, it's mainly Scandi, excuse me. Yeah, it's mainly Scandi, but they've definitely gone, we're going to take this little twist and throw it up here. This contemporary, very minimalist fixture with the black and these ceiling uh, uh, strips, hands down, Scandi. Yes. Uh, no, I said Japandi. Sorry. Yes. Hands down, yes. Japandi. It, yes. Uh, we, yes. You guys nailed it. Okay. It is Japandi. That was amazing. Because <laughs> you had like one I clue, basically, one clue, because it is so close to Scandi. What were you going to say, I, Dina? I have a couple of a couple of questions, and they're really from from the chat. And I agree. Like, so you've got these floating stairs, which is confusing to me, and then you've got the shiplap along with the wood floors, and that's all a little. So, what would you do? You have anything to say about that? Yes, 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 absolutely. And in fact, Claudia just asked this in the uh, uh, in the um, in the in the thing, which is that. They've really pushed the borderline on the the Scandi because, like Jonathan said, minimalistic, uh, minim- minimalist. Excuse me, very clear. Um, but the way they did the finishes, in specifically utilizing that same naughty alder or naughty pine. Oh, I wish our inner circle gal with the naughty alder. What uh, 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 charity? Oh, I wish she was here today. I hope she is here today. Anyway, this naughty alder has an opaque white stain on it. So see, you still see the knots, right? And it's run sideways. So it's not your classic shiplap, guys. What it is, because your classic shiplap is a solid color and often it's actually even made out of mdf it's not actually real wood and so this is this harkens back to kind of that natural story and that origin story around scandy using wood for um you know wood for like a lot of the surfaces but treating it in different ways right so it has almost a japandi style scandy style feel to it but the but the um and the 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 shiplap being done in the opaque stain takes it to a little bit more of that raw or sort of more of of, of uh, almost cabin like um scandy right mm-hmm. so it's scandy but it's country scandy it's mm-hmm. not you know urban uh, Scandi, like you saw in Elizabeth's condo in, you know, the heart of Stockholm, this is probably somewhere out in the country. Mm-hmm. Actually, I see a bunch of trees out there. So mm-hmm. I would assume it's probably somewhere in the country. 
for it. Just like we have kind of a, a, a country interpretation of transitional, for instance, right? Um, whereas we have a more urban uh, uh, take on, uh, you know, a transitional space as well. This is more of a Mm, uh, 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 country vibe or a, or a rural vibe version of that minimalist Scandi Japandi uh, vibe nice. to that. Very yes. good. Both fun. Oh, that was fun, Jonathan. Yeah. And we both oh got it. I love it. <laughs> yes, you did good. So, Jonathan, did you Jonathan, have a stump, you Lisa? Have I think one? I. I do. I, Let's see if this works yeah. because I haven't okay. done this on a on a stream yet. So I'm just. Oh, gonna so far, give so this good. A try. Okay, so this one, uh, let's see. It says, Jonathan via search screen, yeah. screen double click. Okay, your... that's a good sign. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay, can oh. you see that? Oh, yes. So this, um, this I saw at Centre Pompidou, which is the largest uh, contemporary art museum in Europe. It's in yeah. Paris. And um, this was a particular time and place um, if you if you want to really just go nuts, then you might be able to say what, who the designer was. But I'm more I'm interested to see if you can identify the time and the location of this uh, this furniture. I didn't know about this before, so maybe I don't know. Oh, you didn't know about this before? Okay, no. so I'm going to throw out a name. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw out Hoffman. Okay. First, because the chair feels like that. So Hoffman was one. Of, so so how we got to early modern pieces is actually through the door of Art Nouveau. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you think about that, and that's why these museums in France, this museum in France, is so important when you understand design history. Um, but. Uh, I want to say this is late 19 teens, somewhere okay. in that range. I want to say that's the period. Um, this lacquer speaks to me. Uh, 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 it's 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 either it's either the very early story around Bauhaus, very early, because it could be a reference to that, or it could be. You know, we tend to think about Bauhaus as the later products that came from Bauhaus, but Bauhaus had a period as early as like 21 or 22, 1921, 22, something like that. But prior to that, what was happening, there, there was this, there was this, if you think about um, the painting The Kiss by Gustav Klimt, right, the idea around that piece is it's it's Art Nouveau, but the lines are starting to straighten up, right? And so that's what this feels like to me. Am I anywhere in the ballpark? Uh, you are, you are. Um, we're, <laughs> it's a little bit later than that, actually. It's um, later, okay. Yeah, not substantially though. You were right that this is complete Bauhaus inspiration because the, the time was, uh, yeah, so this is in the late 1920s. So the chair is late 27. 20s, okay. And 27. The, okay. Yeah, and the wardrobe is from 29. Okay. And these were these were pieces that were designed. I don't know when the lamp was from. Um, they were designed all by an artist. I can't remember his last name, but uh, Franz is his first name. And he, okay. he he was tasked on creating pieces that could be sort of standard furniture for social housing in uh, in Germany. Yes. At that time. Oh my God, I do remember reading about this. Yes, yeah. because, because what was happening was the fine decor movement that was happening wasn't accessible to the main public. And they said, you guys need to come up with something. And the parallel to this, now that you're telling me this, is actually the American uh, craftsman movement because they needed to learn how to take this, this product and mass produce it so it could get into homes. Otherwise it was just sitting in, in artist studios and it was just a concept. Yes, yeah, oh, how fun, exactly oh, right. Franz, oh, I need to look him up. 
Yeah, um, um, I, 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 can oh. find his, I can find his surname for you if you want. Okay, um, okay. And then the only other thing is I have two other pieces that are designed by the same artist. And I, I love it. Did you just hang out all day in Paris in this museum? I did. I, love <laughs> I, was, I was in this gallery for <laughs> the, almost the entire day. <laughs> it was like about eight or nine hours. I'm not gonna lie. Um, okay, so yes. <laughs> um, this one was not at Centre Pompidou, but the other one by this artist was. Uh-oh. And you've got me. Really? Okay. Um, uh, you actually this, have me. I I am not as strong on my early fine artists. Okay. There is another piece by this artist and we'll see if we can figure out what they have in common. And maybe, I don't know, maybe not. This might not be your area of expertise at all, but maybe we can see what we can figure out from that one. So this is the other piece by that same artist. Oh my God, right that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So this one was from Centre Pompidou. Um, the other one was in uh, when I was in uh, in London. That was at Tate Modern. Was the was oh, the big, got it? Okay, yes, yeah. yes. Um, so yes. So what are we noticing in common? The color. <laughs> well, that intense color, right? That the intense, intense color, blue. which is amazing. Yes. yes, and I became obsessed with this color. Uh, this sort of radiant indigo, which is named after its designer. Uh, I wonder if anyone in the Ooh. chat happens to know which designer this radiant is. Radiant indigo. Yeah. Oh, but there's oh a, my God. Th that's my descriptor of it. But there's a, yeah, this, this bright poppy blue, um, saturated blue, was this artist's signature. And, uh, and uh, I was in, uh, I'd say about maybe five or so years ago, I was in Seattle and this color was super trend. It was everywhere. Um, and there was speculation it was gonna be a Pantone color of the year, just kind of making a complete resurgence from about 70 years after this artist thought, tried to make the statement that color in and of itself could be an artistic design statement. And, oh, uh, and it, it's true. It's yeah. absolutely true. Color in and of itself is an artistic statement. Yeah. It's what we do when we paint walls. You know, I mean, Absolutely. that's an artistic statement unto itself, right? Absolutely. I, I wish I anyone... knew the artist. Oh, I just um, anyone in the chat. Oh, does anyone oh, in the chat do is oh. Klein? Joy, yes. no, he's yes. Klein. Oh my is. God. Yes, yes, that is yes. Eve Klein. Yes, yes. That, that is Eve Klein. Um, Eve Klein's uh, blue is is pretty iconic. So yes, there we didn't go. he like make that color? Like it's his color. Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, how fabulous. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh my yeah. gosh. Wow. And yes. actually there was uh there was a little bit of a design war of, I don't know when it was. It was in the 21st century. Um into uh someone who tried to copyright uh I think it was a black and um and oh, just right. trying to make the blackest black <laughs> and that wasn't something that someone could copyright. And so they went with the pinkest pink instead or something like that. I'm totally probably butchering the story, but uh, oh, so that's there are funny. those kinds oh, I should of look that moments up. now and then when color becomes that, that much important. But this is the first one that I heard of. There may have been that sort of thing before. Um, but yeah, Eve Klein is famous for the, um, the particular shade of blue that's wow. in all of, all of the art. Oh Very my cool. gosh. I am th I am thrilled by this. I love this because I also get to kind of like travel, you know, remotely with you vicariously. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh my oh, gosh. You. Dana, did you raise your hand? Yes, I raised my hand. I wanted to say that this is really fascinating and we have a lot of show to go through. So I wanted to move oh. on. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> we do, we do. This is so cool. Thanks, Jonathan. Like this oh, is awesome. Pleasure. I loved this. This is fantastic. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, Lisa, do oh, we yeah. have um, another Q&A that you'd like to get to? I do have more questions for oh. sure. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I Good. got, um, actually in the theme of the, almost the concept of Stump Lisa, I'm going to do this one. <laughs> because this got sent in to me by a um, a previous Inner Circle member. And let me see if we can share screen on this. You guys are going to, this is a whiplash. 
to go from where we were to this, okay? And so this is from Amrita. And Amrita uh, loves color, okay? She was she was one of our early inner circle people. And um, uh, Amrita, uh, Amrita, bah, 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 bah. Amrita ha, um, is of Indian heritage. And so she has this amazing love of color and appreciation of color. Um, and so what we did was we worked with her to kind of give her an envelope of her home that was a little bit of a backdrop so she could show off some of her intensely colored um, uh, contemporary artwork. And we actually added these insane pops of color. And she's she's a little bit of a maximalist, but not totally. Anyway, and so she sent me this. And her question to me on this was, why does this work? It's in El Decor. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you that um, it works, okay, but it works for a couple of very specific reasons. Number one, it's an original villa in Milano, okay? So, so we have these amazing architectural statements that are happening that are part of the villa. If you look at this, um, this ceiling, right, that's happening there, and you look at these huge arched openings, this is still your door height, okay? Do you see how low down this chair seat is, guys? These are probably 10 foot doors, okay? And, you know, you've got the gorgeous marquetry, but what you've got is a massive amount of scale, so if you're going to be a maximalist, you can really easily carry it off when you are when you are dealing with massive scale. The second part of this that really makes it work is around the, the fact that the structure is authentic. OK, so we don't build like this anymore because this is, you know, this is probably, I don't know, 17th or 18th century. Um, and so we don't really have the ability to kind of get some of these intensely um, labor-related uh, architectural details, okay? So this magnificent painting of like you're walking into a room that is actually an outdoor uh, uh, trellis, you know, people just, we don't do that anymore. You know, people that we had time and labor and it meant, it meant importance. And this is an entrance, of course. So they're trying to like make their, uh, uh, they're trying to have their best foot forward, let's say with that. So, you know, they bring you in, they have this magnificent staircase that's kind of like treated with like a, a gilded color um, with golden crackle on it, which is amazing. I'm assuming the carpet is relatively new. Um, but they have a patterned, you know, floor to it. Then they have this magnificent door, which I'm not quite sure leads where. Um, it could be connected to outdoors, I'm not sure, or it could be that front door entry. But the key here is that, um, you know, they've kind of really sort of gone to town with the detailing on the interior of the space to make it feel like it's a transition from outdoors to indoors. And with this insane architecture and this amazing scale, it all just kind of flies together and works. I mean, there's just, it's an easy way to say it. Now, it may not be your taste, but it definitely works. It's worth publishing from the standpoint that it's got a lot of, um, it's got a lot of value to it, uh, especially if you lean toward, towards maximalism, even in a traditional sense, right? So I, I adored it. Would I live in it? Probably not. I would probably paint it white, but then again, you know, <laughs> I'm a designer and I deal with choices all day. So yeah. <laughs> I loved that you sent this in to me, Amrita. I really do. I love that you sent it in because I was like, oh, well, that is fun. And we haven't seen something like that in the design club in a while. Um, but I do have some more questions if I can get, do we have time yeah, to get to some more? Yeah. I got deluged this week, so I had to kind of pick and choose um with some oh i've got one left yes yes that is um kind of oh on the meaty side okay 
So this may be for those of you guys who have been following this um, this uh, this uh, project. Oh, so finder uh, and share. Okay, uh, can you see this? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Good. 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 Um, so this is a project that a gal who has been steadily sort of plugging away. She is a total, she's DIYing this whole thing with not the whole thing. She's got people to install some of these things, but her home, okay, has been piecemealed together since we have had the club open. And so she's been using all of the resources that we have here in the club to be able to get each of her spaces done, you know, stage by stage as she can afford it and all the rest of this. So I don't have a before picture. I wish she had sent me one of this, but this is the the house was a trashed sort of not trashed. I won't say that Angela, but um, it was, it was a beater of a mid-century modern and guys forgive her on this one because she's taking this picture with a compilation lens. So this is actually, this beam is actually a straight line. Of course, Um, it doesn't bend in real life. Um, But you know, you can see there was this old yellow and there was like old furniture in here and things. And it was just, it was a hot mess. So bit by bit, she's added a new floor. She's working on her kitchen right now, which is really good. And the question that she had for me was she had this odd space and many of you guys kind of um, find this to happen when you are dealing with older homes, right? That were buying and refurbishing. Um, And she had this weird niche and she's not. So I had said to her, um, make that a storage area. uh, And she wanted it to be a microwave as well. Right. So now that she's got it, she's not really loving it because you can see from um, this picture that she's got, you know, some nice uh, shaker front cabinets, etc. She's got kind of a, a little contemporary statement here. But this just looks a bit off. And I agree with her. And so what I'm going to recommend you do, Angela, is I would keep this niche. If possible, take it down towards the ground. I don't know if you can or not. But if possible, uh, grab a little bit more space and give yourself something that looks a little bit like an actual um, hutch or a pantry. And so the thing that I don't love about the way that your guy detailed these doors is that they look fussy, okay, next to your cabinets. And what I would do is I would take these these three doors off, <coughs> excuse me, and I'd still do three, but I'd make them one full door each um, with the trim, just like you have it. And that would clean it up. You want to get rid of that middle board. Okay. And so then that way, and I would love to see, you know, a second set of doors, maybe down here that do the same thing to the floor. If you can, if you can't, then just, you know, make this work. Um, And then what you want to do is you also want that door to cover this stop. So I don't know whether or not that is planned on by for drywall or not. I, I, I don't know how you're finishing this out, but I would definitely finish this to the edge on the side with drywall. And then this could cover that stop if you don't have a drywall solution or you don't have like a hard surface counter to kind of finish that up. Um, so Angela, I don't know if you're here today or not, but if you are, that is, um, very exciting, a little progress. It was so nice to see the kitchen because guys, what she had before was crazy bad. Actually, I saw it in, in, I saw it when it was torn up. So, um, you know, and it's always hard to like live through a renovation and she was doing that. So, um, here's to you. Oh, here's another picture of it at night. See, looking very nice, guys. Right? She picked mm-hmm. all of this, um, all of this lovely tile and stuff for the um, backsplash. Um, I can tell you when she presented it to me, she wanted this backsplash to be this wild sort of mid-century modern orange, and I'm like, stop right there. 
<laughs> Stop right there. You can do all the mid-century modern or uh, MCM orange you want in your upholstery, but do not do that on that tile wall because it's not big enough and you don't have the right breakup for it to really make it work. Yeah. So she chose this instead. And I think this is a much cleaner, happier solution. So good on you. Angela. Yay. Yay. So, you know, all right. Joy, Joy in chat actually brought up um, an interesting question. Um, what about doing two yes. pocket doors for the niches? She could do the pocket yeah. doors. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. If they can slide back, that could work. And maybe that's what that's intended for. Mm. Joy, that's a very good point, which is that maybe they don't swing out. Maybe they, you know, bifold or telescope back. It could do any one of those things. I don't know oh, the uh, sophistication of her uh, cabinet guy. Um, so, gotcha. yeah, yeah. So, but I do like the idea of telescoping. Always get doors out of the way. Telescoping sliders. Those are the things you want to always have on things. So, okay. That was it. I am going to say one more thing, which is that a lovely person sent me in a question. And darling, I don't know. She's Italian. And so she didn't give me her first name. But I'm just going to say M. Flair. Okay. And you sent me this lovely story about designing with pink. And I sent you an email back that said... Send me some pictures because I'm very interested in seeing your project um, because pink can be rather challenging um, as a color. And it sounds like what you're doing sounds gorgeous. Uh, but I want you to send me some pictures and I would love to feature you. So that's okay. your task. Ciao, Bella. Um, <laughs> ci vediamo dopo. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's in Italy or Washington. I'm not sure where she is. So, but she's part of Italian. So. <laughs> They're so similar. <laughs> I, jump I know, right? I, there was a mention of DC, and I'm like, mm, okay, maybe she's, oh, okay. Um, maybe oh. she's there. Okay, so yes, Dana. Yes. I was wait, okay. So I wanted to say something, um, guys. So you know, this this kind of brings us a little bit to inner circle and i wanted to share my screen because i have a nifty little logo i want to show everybody here we go can you see that yes yes that Yay, looks good. inner circle <laughs> so this is the inner circle i guess it's over here so this is the inner circle guys and you know here's the thing i just want to let you guys know because i know there might be a few of you guys out there going inner circle what is this I, oh my god i'm in the middle of a project how do i get involved what what's this whole thing about it's a coaching program that Lisa, myself, and Megan are lead, basically, but Lisa obviously is, it leads it. And we have two more classes, not classes or sessions, programs, um, until we're done with this year. And the next one starts October 1st. And this is where I'm going to do my fancy sharing with my screen. Hang on, guys. And October 1st. And oh, look at that yay technology, i know and the and the thing guys is if you want to um become involved or you want to find out more about it you can still get into the october 1st uh course because we had two that are really really close together we have people going into, into different ones but it's a very 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 small uh group of clients that we get to work with and if you want to find more go to day uh email me directly at Dana at Lisa Holt.com or hello at Lisa Holt.com. Um, either one of those will get to the right people and we can get you out all the information. And even though it starts on October 1st, we still have enough time. As long as we're talking by the next um, day or two, um, we can get you information by Wednesday, Thursday, and then you're in. So we can be online line live with you on our very next inner circle program. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you were here and you saw Joy's um, uh, interview, so to speak, or or we were working with Joy, that is a little bit of what it's like. I mean, we're on with you and it's just you and Lisa and the team, and we're working with you to get your homes perfect and to make to make that dream mm -hmm. home come true. And I know that Joy would say that that's probably true, right? Yeah. Well, anyway. Joy in chat actually said, inner circle's a lifesaver. Sign up today, people. Heart, heart. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't fail oh, to my. say that. 
<laughs> oh, I love that. That's so great. Oh my gosh. You know what it is, is that everybody's homes are different. And so if you are tackling a bigger project, it's helpful to get some coaching or some advice, you know, mm -hmm. and I, you know, we really realized that, oh my gosh, we can't do this um, on our own. Uh, people be, like Joy said, she, it's, you get in too deep and you know, uh, you realize that there's a lot of training that throws a lot of information to us that we can deliver. Yes. Can yes. Dana. About that? You know, guys, you know, what, what happened for us is Lisa and I had like that, an epiphany, epiphany. epiphany. Mm -hmm. and, and it was basically <laughs> realized that, well, if you are doing a project, I'm, I'm not talking about maybe you're redecorating a living room. You have design clip for that, but if you're doing yes. a major project, you have two choices. Until now, you could either hire a designer and work with a design firm. That's all kind of the same thing. Or you are doing it on your own and you are working with the salespeople and the sales floors of, of showrooms. You're working with your contractor. What do you think? Should I do this? Should I do that? You're working with your friends, your family, your, your mother, your father, your kids. I mean, we have kids actually dictating what they want in the house. And, and really, you just have these two options. And this is sort of the, I think it's the best of both worlds. You're not you're not paying a fortune for, uh, sorry, designers, but you know, it, it's not inexpensive to work with a designer. You know, we, we, we charge a lot to do what we do. Um, but, but inner circle is a way for you to kind of have the best of both worlds. And that's really what we thought of when we started doing it and we can help and we can help and work with a lot of people at, at a time. And I think we have 60, 70 clients that have gone through inner circle and we just started it earlier this year. So Mm -hmm. And I would say they, I don't know that if anybody's ha hasn't loved it. It only reason why someone wouldn't like the pro program is if it's too much firepower for them. And that'd be because like, maybe I just need a new rug in my living room and we can handle that on Q and A's yeah. and we can handle that in sign club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And we look at applications too. In other words, you guys give us a general idea about what your project is involved with. And if we feel like it is too much, we'll tell you, no, 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 let's keep you in the club and kind of, we can, we can work from that. We've done that with a couple of people because, you know, it's, it's an eight week long program and you learn a lot um, uh, uh, in those eight weeks, but if it's a if it's a simpler question, I'd much rather be able to give it to you here and do that. But if you've got anything that's complex, um, mm -hmm. even just as simple as one room, right? But it's a wet room. I always put those in a special category. So bathrooms or kitchens, do not tackle those on your own because there is a real easy well, way. Bathrooms. It's very easy to spend way more than you needed to. Mm -hmm. Lisa, but that, it, but not just bathrooms, kitchens, bathrooms, kitchens, new builds, extensions to your house. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Roofs, landscaping. Yard, I mean, it's yeah. all of that. That's all, you know, here's the thing guys, we, we don't typically go to school for interior design or become. Yeah, that's true. But most people don't. So, right. Right. You know, always the top of her field and what she does, but she doesn't do, interior design isn't what she knows. And you need, and you know, Lisa's got 35 years, or 30 years, sorry, I don't mean to say. I was going to say, duh, I'm not that old. <laughs> I mean, all we do is talk about design and figuring out solutions for people. And, you know, to have someone on your side, on your team, that helps you come to those answers and those conclusions and have, and have the confidence to know that that's right is everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway, you know, I'm just reading the chat here and Claudia says, yeah. Amen to joy, right? And she says, and then she goes, someone says something. I was just, I said, yeah, she says, uh, yeah, to your point. Yeah, Claudia said when she started building a home, she realized that there was so much she didn't know. She realized how illiterate she was in the, the building realm. And and that's not Claudia's fault. Like like your point, Dana, she didn't go to design school. You know, she doesn't have like how, however many years of experience like Lisa has, and we, we wouldn't expect you to, you shouldn't expect yourself to, but the reality is of remodeling or building or redesigning a home, it's extraordinarily complicated and one decision will impact all of the others. So you want to have uh, appropriate guidance before you take on anything even marginally uh, complex. So it's true. Uh, Karen says inner circles has saved my sanity. 
Good. Oh my God. And Claudia yeah. said, y'all save me from having a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that's how stressful, that's how stressful remodeling and design and building homes can be. It's super stressful. It's very stressful. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, no joke guys. I had someone on my, on our next program, um, uh, 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 Thursday who was in tears mm-hmm. just about like losing it, losing it, losing it and did not know where to go. And it wasn't even so much about design. It actually had to do with getting, cause there's doing the design work, right. And then there is managing the process so that what you've designed actually arrives and gets installed and looks the way you expected it to look. That's a whole nother skill set that, mm-hmm. like I said earlier, no one's really talking about that, but I'm going to do a whole thing on it because there's ways to get, you know, there's not many people out there that are tackling alone like Angela is with that and doing cabinets and things like that. Most people don't have those skill sets. Well, um, and so you've got to work with people that do, right? You've got to mm-hmm. go work with someone who can install your tile. You've got to work mm-hmm. with someone that can install your electrical. I am not a licensed electrician, but I know how to talk to them. Mm-hmm. And that is everything. Because if you know how to communicate what it is you want, then, and that's what we talk about a lot in the inner circle. If you know how to communicate what it is you want to the person that's got to actually make it happen, then you'll end up with a project that looks like kind of what you're carrying around in your head. Mm-hmm. And, that is and, really, that's part of it. And in our what last um, masterclass that we had, Lisa told a little story about, um, about a contractor pulling a gun on her. So uh, <laughs> It was quite interesting. So if you're in the design club and you watch the latest um, masterclass, will, which will be posted this week, um, you'll see this whole conversation about, you'll hear the whole story about Lisa and the gun and everything like that. <laughs> yeah, I to say, <laughs> yeah what that's I sadly to, true. <laughs> so what I wanted to tell everybody was, um, I, I wanted to, to make sure that you guys knew that if you're interested, you know, and you're going, well, how do I figure this out? Just go to those uh, Dana at LisaHolt.com. Can you guys put that in, 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 into both YouTube and um, and chat? In chat, you guys know my my email, but Dana at LisaHolt.com or hello at LisaHolt.com. And the shameless plug is over. <laughs> shameless plug. Shameless. Oh my gosh. No, well, you know what I would say? <laughs> I, what I would say is this, is this, is that it really is, we're here to help guys whether or not it's on YouTube or if you're a member of the design club or if you've got something that you need to deal with, the talk to us about Inner Circle. But we are here for you. That's what it's about. That is what it's about. And think about this, Jonathan. We're coming up on a year of the design club being open. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Can you believe that? Lisa, I have to read something from YouTube really quick. So Renee says, super valuable to have backup from the contractor bullies who are stuck in their go getter done vibe without listening and the skill to communicate with these people. And that is exactly right. And that's just, that's one little bit of what we do. Not only do we coach you exactly what to say and what to do, but we're also talking to you about every other aspect that, I mean, literally we're right with you working and designing and working in your homes. But yes, you're exactly right. Right yes, that God, that is really that is such a beautiful statement because know, you know, I'm gonna they, take a they, picture of the chat. I'm gonna take a picture. Oh, oh my god, it's true. Uh, 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 you know, the reality of it is you want a great house at the end, right? Mm-hmm. But what the contractor wants is to get it done and move on because that's how he, you know, that's how that's his job, actually. But so there has to be a meeting in the middle, right? So that so that getting it done ends up being getting it done the way you want it done. Yeah. And sometimes you have to figure out how to finesse that. Yeah. And it mm-hmm. it takes a lot of work. And I won't say that there's a lot of uh, support for that out there that um, that teaches you guys how to make those things happen. But there's, um, two, there, there's two things, Lisa. You, you've got the con, you've got contractors that that don't want an educated consumer because they're going to yes, get in the yes, way. Yes, absolutely. But they, do, 
but but some contractors really do love um, a client who knows what they're talking about, is making good decisions from the beginning, and not throwing yes. a ton of yes. orders out there because that's where your budgets are going to go crazy. And guys, it's it's it can be a fortune if you make the wrong decisions. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. and 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 what's true too is that when you are informed, not only does the uh, uh, does the, um, uh, leverage change. Okay. Because now you're informed. So he knows he, she knows they know that, you know, so not only can things not be gotten away with that maybe could have been if they suspected that you weren't knowing or paying attention, but the other aspect to it is that there are many contractors out there that really appreciate it because now they know their job can move a little faster because you're informed. You don't need to have to have all of this stuff explained to you and why is this happening and you're changing your mind five times on the job site. That's the headache for him too, trust me, because it it's going to cost you more money and it's a headache for him because now a job that he had slated to take six weeks is going to take 10. And that's a problem because he has two other jobs starting. So yeah. anyway, yeah. so speaking you know, of knowing speaking how of, it all goes together. <laughs> that's no, that's right. I was going to say, speaking of other jobs starting, we've got an inner circle coming up here, Lisa, very, very shortly that I got, I've got to, I've got to let you know. Oh, you. That was uh, yeah. All right. Oh, thank you. I am no. officially but zipping you know it. It's so funny because wind Lisa up and she just goes, you know, <laughs> like it's amazing whether it's just. I, I don't topic. like bullies. She's just so yeah, no kidding. No, no. Yeah. We hate bullies. Yeah. So. But whether it's design she's info, so I've got to stop her is my point because she's she's got other things that she's got to do today and that would be our inner circle class. And so we're going to go yes, for that. Okay. But this was an amazing show today. I really enjoyed this. Yes. I loved it. Yeah, it I loved it. It was, it was so fun. Yeah, I'm packed. And thanks for the stump, Lisa, Jonathan. That was awesome. I hope you hope you oh, have more that was in the great. roster. Oh, yeah, oh, wait, like, wait, can I share I, one I'll more see thing? I can find. Okay, cool. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I want to see one more thing. Right. I want to okay. oh. ask a question. Oh, oh there's God. that blue. Is there's that blue. gorgeous? It's so I intense. was like, Eve's oh, Klein blue. I'm and not. it's called, according to Wikipedia, like okay. it's called International Blue, Jonathan. Oh, okay. cool. Yeah, yeah, you know, they say, you know, there's the international orange, which is a standard of yeah. orange that can be seen in daylight at a certain um, light reflectance issue. This is now called International Orange by Eve's Klein. Oh, so and hey, how cool is that? I, I love it. Oh, yeah, I love it. Thank Squally you for that. I love us that. Just at the end, Squally is here to say good morning. We're, good morning, Squally. We're here the to say twins. good morning. Goodbye, because we're about to leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, it was it was a delightful to be able to to present some design challenges to Lisa. Yeah. Hopefully they were too hard. Yeah, I love it. I love it. No, more it's, art oh, than shot. design, but they were awesome. Uh, but yeah, that was great fun. And also, yes, congratulations to Design Club on on approaching the one year mark. I can't believe it's oh been that long, but it's, it's wild. Been, yeah. It's been such a treasured resource for so many people being able to connect about design things, and there it really is one of a kind. So. I'm happy that that's that's continuing and that's flourishing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, I want to say because Jonathan is an OG. Yeah, he is truly. I mean, what were you first day that we opened? You were there. <laughs> I think yeah. so. Um, probably. Yeah, I think so yeah. Yes, and so so for all of our OGs, you know, there is so much coming. What we've got planned for next year, oh my gosh, you need to hold on to your panties because <laughs> it is just going to blow up, yeah. I am telling you. So if you guys think there's a lot in there now, oh my gosh, yeah. uh-huh. we've been busy. Yes. <laughs> guys, guys, if you, if, if I, I have to ask everybody a question and I'm serious about this. Um, you know, uh, we've done the Q&As and we've taken the Q&As a little bit more to a... Um, more of a broader uh, presentation. And I'm wondering if you guys are enjoying what we're doing now in the last week or two and whether you're enjoying the show. I hope you say yes. And if not, <laughs> constructive criticism is good, is always appreciated. But, you know, um, we thought that questions are great and but they help very specific people. But if we bring in more people and we do kind of more things, 
I think that it becomes more of a, um, it's more entertaining and kind of for a Sunday morning, we thought it would be fun. If you want um, bells and whistles, not bells and whistles, if you want like nuts and bolts, um, I suggest that what you guys do is you join the design club if you're not already in it, and then you'll be able to be a part of our master classes that we run. And that is very nuts and bolts. And we get into the nitty gritty of design all the time every week. So join us in design club if you're in, on YouTube and you've never been in design club. And um, just put in the code love Lisa, and you'll get us a little special thing, I think. That's so. fun. I like that. That's mm -hmm. the code. That's yes, cute. That Again, they're cute. I love that. I love so. cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I happen to love the new show format because now I'm famous. And Yay. Famous. <laughs> yes, you be part right. of it. No, that's we love right. it too. No, we love it too. All right. Well, oh, Dana, do you want to take right. us home? You want to take us home? You, no, you got, you have to take us home. I got to take us home. My first time ever. Well, guys, thank you again for joining us. This again was so amazing. Thanks to Jonathan. Thank you, Lisa, as always. Wonderful job. Thanks, Dana. And please join us next Sunday, same time, same place. And for all of our design clubbers, join us this Thursday for our masterclass. It's all about designing with artwork. It's 1 p.m. Pacific time. So just that's what's Ooh. upcoming. Yes, I'm excited for that one too. So, okay, then that's it, guys. Thanks. We love you. We love you, love you. Bye. 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 Bye.